So today, Glorious have finally completed the entire lineup of their gaming mice, for now at least. That means that we now have both wired and wireless options for the Model O and the Model D, and the smaller variants too, the Model O- and the Model D-. So of course, we'll take a look at those two new gaming mice from Glorious, but I kind of just want to take an opportunity here to take a look at the entire wireless stack from Glorious as a whole, and kind of discuss which ones are worth it, and in which circumstances you might want to consider some different options from other brands. Let's start off though by talking about the actual wireless implementation that Glorious has implemented here, which is really easy talking about these four gaming mice because it is pretty much all the same. In fact, if I had to guess, it looks like Glorious have just taken the same MCU, sensor, battery, switches, and firmware, and simply just packaged it with a different shell. That's really the main differences between these four gaming mice is the shell. So really, when it comes to the click latency tests and the input lag between these four mice, it's pretty much identical. In my opinion, this is a good thing. It makes the production process a lot simpler and easier to manage from a company point of view. And it's also why Glorious have been able to scale up their mouse lineup so easily. One really important note though, when it comes to the click input lag of these mice, uh, they are all set by default with a 10 millisecond debounce delay. So if you play first person shooters with a bit of a competitive nature, I would highly recommend setting that debounce delay to zero. Setting it to zero milliseconds, click latency is brought a little bit closer in line with something like a G Pro Wireless, and overall, the result here is really solid. Of course, the big risk here with setting it to zero milliseconds is that you'll now run into the possibility of double clicking, but that's just not something that I've yet to encounter here. Personally, I really have no idea why a 10 millisecond debounce delay is necessary here out of the box. Sure, you could argue that most people won't notice, but in my opinion, we should be pushing for the fastest, most competitive gaming mice that we can, especially when, you know, an extra 10 milliseconds of delay, that can make a difference in some competitive settings. And in terms of sensor input lag, I have tested the Model O wireless here and the results are pretty decent. A couple of milliseconds slower than the G Pro Superlight, but that's not really a difference worth focusing on. All of the wireless glorious mice use the BAMF sensor, which runs at a 1000 Hertz polling rate. And honestly, this sensor feels great. As you would expect, since this is a collaboration with PixArt, who makes some of the best optical sensors for gaming mice out there. The differences here between this and then Logitech's Hero Sensor or Razer's Focus Plus Sensor, they're just not noticeable. All feel absolutely flawless in game. I will eventually be building tools to stress test these sensors and detect things like smoothing and ripple, but for now, you'll just have to take my word for it as a fellow gamer. Now, apart from the BAMF sensor, there are also a ton of other similarities here among the wireless glorious lineup. You have the same PTFE feet, all those slightly different sizes, same honeycomb RGB outer shell design, same quoted 71 hour battery life when in use, and even the scroll wheel is the same too. Lightweight and really chunky, which I am a big fan of. So the main difference here is then in the outer shell and I guess the size and shape of the mouse and how it really feels in the hand. Let's start with the Model O because I think this is going to be kind of the most mainstream option for a lot of people. And yeah, this one does have quite a lot of competition, mainly the Logitech G Pro Superlight and the Razer Viper Ultimate. So in terms of shape, size and weight, the Model O and Viper Ultimate are extremely similar mice. I mean, they feel almost identical to me in the hand. The G Pro Superlight on the other hand is about three millimeters shorter and two millimeters taller. And yeah, you do feel that difference. If you're someone who likes to claw grip your mouse and have a bit of palm contact at the rear, you are better off with a G Pro Superlight since you do have a bit more support there at the back. For more relaxed grips though, fingertip grip for example, that's where you might feel a bit more comfortable with those other two options. Of course, the other big difference here is the price. Model O Wireless is $80, G Pro Superlight almost double that at $150. Viper Ultimate is a bit more tricky since that pricing kind of varies quite a bit per region, but it's usually somewhere in between those two. And in my opinion, that pricing does reflect how I would order and rank these mice against each other. If you can pick up the Viper Ultimate though around the $100 mark, that might be the better choice over the Model O Wireless. So to summarize my overall feelings on the Model O Wireless, I do kind of picture it as the neutral shaped wireless budget option for those who you know might want the Viper Ultimate and Superlight, but 
you know, don't want to spend $100 plus on a gaming mouse. That extra money does kind of make sense though in those circumstances, like the Razer Viper Ultimate doesn't have a honeycomb shell. I do think a solid shell is a bit more premium and you also get a charging dock too. And then for the Gpro Superlight, you know, pretty much a rank one gaming mouse right now, 60 grams. And I do think that the overall shell and shape is just a bit more user friendly for a lot of people. But now let's talk about the Model D wireless. And honestly, this one is super easy because if you need a light lightweight ergonomic wireless gaming mouse, uh, this is the one to get. There really is not many other options out there. It's big, it's comfy, but at the same time feels really great to game with. It also feels surprisingly balanced, which is kind of hard to achieve with such a big empty shell. And despite not really liking ergonomic mice myself, I always find them a bit too big and chunky. I was actually aiming okay with this thing. I do think that Glories have done a pretty good job here. And again, the choice here is pretty simple. Logitech haven't made a lightweight G703 yet, nor does Razer or any other big brand have a direct competitor to the Model D wireless. This is also a really nice upgrade if you are someone who has previously used a Zowie EC1. And the story here is pretty much the same with the Model D minus wireless, the new option that's launching today. There's just nothing out there that can really compete. So basically, if you're after an ergonomic mouse, but the Model D is a bit too big, the D minus should fit perfectly. For me, I found both totally usable in game, so it's purely going to come down to personal preference. One kind of close competitor here would be the Ponage Ultra Custom, the ergonomic version, although Ponage have yet to offer a firmware or software update for this mouse, which is a bit unfortunate. That means that click latency is still kind of bad, and in comparison, the D- is just a much better purchase overall. I also think the D- is an excellent option if you want something comfortable and ergonomic without going for something too oversized, because a lot of the ergo mice out there do feel that way for sure. Uh, you know, D- minus here, size-wise, it's not too different to something like a G Pro Superlite, but it's just a lot more kind of contoured and optimized for right-handed users. So again, really, really comfortable here, but doesn't feel like an elephant. And finally, we have the Model O-, minus, and this is a tough one because this mouse is small, and I mean really, really small. Although it is two millimeters longer than the Viper Mini, it's three millimeters shorter at its tallest point. And so for me, I found this mouse really difficult to use. It is is an extremely shallow and flat mouse. I am glad that this exists though, because if you have small hands or you prefer a fingertip grip, this is probably like the perfect aimbot mouse for you. For most people, uh, smaller, lighter mice are generally easier to aim with, down to a certain point of course. And again, for small hands, this is a seriously good option. This one does have some competition though, and that's against another new mouse, the Ultra Custom Sim 2. This is a mouse that I haven't made a video on yet, but is one that I've personally been using uh, every now and then, and I am a big fan of it. This one is also made by Ponage, like the Ultra Custom Ergo, but the firmware and software here has been updated. Click latency and sensor latency is right around where it should be. And then shape-wise, it's pretty much a Viper Mini. I mean, a tiny bit bigger in certain places, but the two feel almost identical in the hand. I would say that this is a top three gaming mouse for me currently, and I probably will make a video about it eventually, but just do consider this if you do think the Model O- minus will be a little bit too small for you. So yeah, those are my overall thoughts on the current Glorious Gaming Mice options. Uh, overall, the D and the D- minus are really, really competitive options, no real competition there, and the O and the O- minus are super great value options for what they offer, but they definitely do have at least some competition there to consider. Otherwise, some really great options here that I think a lot of people should consider, especially for the price. I mean, $80, you are getting some really good value here and I will leave them linked down below. As always, a huge thanks for watching guys and I'll see you all in the next one.